Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Infamous NYC here coming back with a build for the Scalebreaker patch. This is a Stamina Templar build that is designed for Battlegrounds. I am a Battlegrounds exclusive ESO content creator. I've been playing ESO for the better part of about five years and I'm coming back with another build for the Battlegrounds for the Stamina Templar. If you're looking for Battleground builds, or builds in general, be sure to check out battleofthebuild.com. It's your number one source for ESO related battleground builds for no CP, as well as CP as these builds are designed for both. It can be made on both CP as well as no, no CP. You can check them out here under the ESO slash classes page, and then just basically click on any of the links here. Um, there's always gonna be a little bit of a gameplay video as well as multiple builds that you can check out. Just by clicking on the link, it'll take you to various amounts of builds typically have um, multiple builds for all sorts of gameplays whether you're playing stamina magic a hybrid for dps you know tanking or for healing healing rolls you can always check me out on twitch as i do stream pretty regularly and appreciate all the support feel free to like comment subscribe if this is your first time visiting um my youtube uh, so this way you don't miss out on any further content and if you enjoy the content be sure to hit the like button with that said, this is a Stamina Templar build for the Scalebreaker patch. My particular Stamplar is a Imperial. I do like Imperial for the extra health, Stamina, as well as the Red Diamond passive, which reduces all of your abilities, including your ultimate, by additional 3%, as well as giving you a little bit of sustain whenever you deal direct damage, increasing, giving you a little bit of HP return, as well as um, Magicka and Stamina. This was my Medium Armor build. This build is going to be a 5-1-1 build for the Battlegrounds. With that said, let's jump right into the build. Um, like I said, um, this particular build, I'm utilizing the Thief Mundestone. Right, this is in Cyrodiil, all points in to Stamina. I am an Imperial on this particular build. Um, because of the high amount of dot damage, I typically don't like utilizing proc sets, but for this particular build, in this current meta, because Xenomax decided to go this route, I decided I'm going to go the route of utilizing Troll King. It has really good synergy and group play, as well as, of course, for those who are looking to do some 1vxing um, or taking on multiple opponents, or being this is a much build that is designed uh, for a much more brawler like gameplay while still keeping good effective weapon damage. I am utilizing 7th Legion. 7th Legion will be our, our, buff, our, our, buff, our buff set for the back bar. Um, as well as utilizing the set, the trainee set. The trainee is a really good set. It gives you back um, HP, uh, magicka, and stamina, as well as the five piece giving you back HP, uh, magicka, and stamina. It did get nerfed several patches ago, but it's still a really good set for just raw, for raw stats. This is a dual wheel 2H. I am utilizing a Nernhone dagger with shock. Again, that is to increase our critical. A weapon, a weapon critical, um, as well as the Nernhorn, of course, for the extra damage. Shock is there to proc the minor vulnerability. I went with the dual wield mace. The dual wield mace is designed for more bursty gameplay than utilizing an axe with the chance to proc a bleed. I prefer the mace for the guaranteed penetration. It deals an additional 10% um, penetration. Um, and of course, the like I said before, the dagger is there for the extra critical damage. On the jewelry, we went all weapon damage with one jewelry being infused so that I could hit the 4k um, weapon damage, which is, which is what I wanted to, to hit on this particular build. It is an infused mace, and we're running the uh, weapon glyph on the front bar for 100% uptime on 4k weapon damage. The back bar is powered, and the back bar is where we're going to proc um, 7th Legion. 7th Legion got changed where it says is when you cast an ability that increases your physical and spell resistance, it says you gain an additional 350 um, weapon damage as well as health recovery. In this patch, particularly in this patch because of the heavy dot meta, I do recommend higher health recovery builds because abilities like Vigor got nerfed in terms of the duration. It went from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. Um, even though they did increase the tooltip, problem is that with the no heal ticks from rally as well as a shorter duration on vigor it decreases your window of opportunity to deal damage which is why i went this route 
where health recovery helps you to sustain because you're not continually going to your back bar or wasting resources having to heal so you can utilize your health recovery via troll king um as i said before um troll king it says when you heal yourself or an ally it says if they're still below 50 percent it increases your health recovery by an additional 15 50 for 10 seconds heavy armor will increase the amount of health recovery that you receive by an additional 20 percent as well as an additional 20% whenever you utilize a pot. It'll give you back an additional 20%. As well as we're utilizing Radiant Aura. Radiant Aura gives you the minor buffs, so you'll gain an extra 50% to all of your health recovery, which is why I went this route. And like I said before, um, weapon damage on all of the jewelry, um, in pen on everything except for the chest. The heavy chest should always be reinforced. Try stats on all your big pieces and stamina on all of your small pieces. Um, the back bar is power and that is to increase our healing done on the back bar. Um, I am running our Tam food and our Tam food is there again for the recovery, for the magic, for the stamina recovery, for the HP recovery as well as the additional health and stamina. Um, you can see the stats right here, um, 26.6 health recovery. Um, health. Um, 12k magicka, 30k stam, 4,000 proct, um, health recovery. Six. Th these are our these are our recoveries again with a pot, uh, and this is our weapon damage. This is 100% uptime because it's really easy to proc via channeled focus. Our weapon critical is 32%. We're at 70% critical damage. You can see our physical and spell resistance here with our critical resistance. Um, right here and then the effective weapon damage I typically like to hit at least try to get close to 7k if not more this build reaches higher than 7,000 effective weapon damage and we'll go into that right now the abilities that we're using is biting jabs is gonna be our spammable you can see the tooltip right there of 2800 it also gives you your major savagery buff as well as um, slowing the opponent by 70% for two seconds our form of CC is going to be binding binding javelin um, within the uh, Templar Adric spear ability whenever you activate an Adric spear ability it'll give you um, spear wall which will give you minor protection for six seconds so you can actually put one on your front bar and one on your back bar so that you can keep power of the light um, on your front bar so that once power of the light goes down automatically goes right back up um, we're utilizing again power of the light. You can see the tooltip right there. There's a little bit of damage up front It'll give you access to a little bit more um, uh, Ultimate recovery via prism so once it goes down it's six second duration prism has a six second cooldown the so the moment um, Power of the light basically goes off reapply it so that you can keep um, the 100% uptime on the prism passive as well as, of course, you can see the tooltip there it deals 18,000 copy damage, as well as giving you a little bit of team synergy by helping your um, allies deal a little bit more damage, whether they're magic or stamina, as it gives you access to both minor breach and minor fracture. The other ability that we're using is Deadly Cloak. Deadly Cloak lasts 8 seconds. It gives you access to Major Evasion. Major Evasion reduces the amount of AoE damage that you take by 25%. Right, think Dawnbreaker, think Leap, um, Destro Alt, the Warden Alt, you know, anything that deals area of effect damage, engulfing, um, talons, etc. As well as uh, it deals damage every second, right? It says every one second, um, it says in a five meter area, you'll deal just about 1300 additional damage. It's basically, as well as it'll proc um, the glyphs on both of your weapons because. It, in essence, kind of acts like, uh, because it's an AOE, um, within the dual wield, it procs, um, it procs the, the glyphs. Now, the, um, the other ability that we're utilizing for giving us a little bit of ranged damage, as we have three different ranged abilities between Binding Javelin, Power of the Light, and then, of course, our Dot, which is going to be Consuming Trap. It's got an 18-6 tooltip, as well as giving us Sustain. Um, the reason I liked Imperial was because it gives us both... Um, health and stamina and which is why I chose the trainee set because the trainee pairs really well with this ability as it says there This portion of the ability in terms of the recovery Scales off of your max stat, which is why I went this route 
to because we're in heavy armor we're utilizing training um on this particular build like i said before we're utilizing um imperial which gives us both magicka as well as stamina which is so we'll gain a lot of recovery as you can see right there it's just shy of 6k hp an additional 2460 magicka as well as 6k stamina whenever we secure a kill with with this ability or whenever anyway dies while this ability is on them the other ability that we're utilizing is radiant aura this synergizes really well with your team so that you and your teammates whenever they deal damage will receive minor magicka steel basically giving you an additional 600 magic of recovery so like i said before um even though our recovery is low here we're gaining a lot of recovery from radiant aura and radiant aura is free as well as giving you access to the minor fortitude minor endurance as well as minor intellect this is really good team synergy again when i create builds I try to create builds that are competitive and of course can be played within a team environment so instead of just being completely selfish and just going all damage you want to be able to offer your teammates um, basically something extra so giving our teammates sustain is a great option um, on the back bar we're utilizing race against time which with the extra magical recovery we're able to utilize this instead of going um, with forward momentum race against time um, will give you also minor force minor force a Templar pairs pairs really well because of the piercing spear passive, which it says right there. It says increases your critical damage by an additional 10%, as well as increasing your damage by um, an additional 10% to blocking targets, which is why you want it on both bars. So that when you go to your back bar to CC as well or deal light attack damage with the axe, um, you'll you have it, an increased amount of. Um, an increased amount of critical damage that you can do as well as increase the amount of damage that you're dealing towards blocking targets as well as being able to proc the spear wall on both bars as it'll proc with jabs and it'll also proc when you go to your back bar to stun that's why we're sitting at 0.7 while most people are sitting at 0.5 um templars gain extra critical damage which is why i went the route of going the thief and the dagger in heavy armor so that we have a little bit more critical damage was of course will also increase our critical heal ticks from both rally as well as extended ritual as well as as well as the critical heals that you can get from consuming trap um, like i said before binding javelin is going to be our cc um, rally is in the back bar over forward momentum because we're getting the immunity to roots and snares from race against time rally is primarily there for the burst heal as well as giving I mean, even though it redundantly gives us access to minor endurance primarily we're using it in conjunct in conjunction with high health recovery so basically we can actually sit within the rally a little bit longer because we have really good health recovery you know well basically which is why i wanted more hp which is why i recommend going a race that has more hp so that your health pool is higher when troll king procs Troll King will proc when you're at 13,000 HP. Um, typically, if you're going to be wearing heavy armor, I like to shoot for about 25k. This particular build, we're going above and beyond that. So when you hit 12, when you hit 13k HP, Troll King will kick in, which allows you to let that rally basically wait to get bigger, burstier heals. Um, extended Ritual is there for the cleanse as well as the heal. You can see the tooltip almost 2,700. Which translates to roughly um, an additional 1300 every two seconds so in essence when your troll king procs and your troll king can be procced by extended ritual or by rally or by your ultimate or by I forgot to mention um, on the back bar I did chose to use the health recovery glyph so that if you didn't have enough magicka to proc the heal from extended ritual and you didn't want to waste your rally because maybe you wanted to sit in it a little longer, you can light attack. The light attack will proc the troll king, which is why I went this route. Um, extended ritual is there for the heal. It's there for the cleanse, as well as the team synergy. It does provide a slow, as well as giving your teammates the opportunity to utilize the purify synergy, which removes all negative effects. Um, I think it's every 30 seconds or 20 seconds. Um, for this particular build, I decided to go channeled acceleration. I wanted high magicka uptime for more cleanses as well as for utilizing race against time as needed 
as well as being able to make really good use of consuming trap without literally obliterating um, our magic pool. 1200, 12k is a good amount, but again, with the really low um, magic of recovery, if we didn't go this route, we wouldn't be able to utilize a lot of these abilities reliably, which is why I went this route. This ability will also proc um, uh, the ability there from the passive there from um, 7th Legion. In terms of the ultimate, um, I went with Remembrance for the group synergy in case you didn't have a healer. It gives you the opportunity to be able to heal your teammates um, if you get ulti dumped or if you see multiple opponents are getting hard focused. If you're getting focused by two teams, it gives you the opportunity to be able to offer more utility to your teammates. And Templars are really good at healing. Now for this particular build, um, because I'm running dual wield, I did decide to go with Thrives and Chaos. Thrives and Chaos deals really good damage, as you can see right there. It's got a 22k tooltip, very similar tooltips to abilities like Dawnbreaker. You might be thinking, well, Dawnbreaker will at least give you the 300 extra weapon damage, which will be affected by Major Brutality, as well as being affected um, by Minor Brutality if you have a DK in your team, as well as being affected by um, Balanced balanced Warrior. Why would you not go that route? reason being is because... Thrives and Chaos will deal more damage on a dual wield build than Dawnbreaker. And the reason being is because of the last part. Each enemy hit increases your damage done by 6%. Um, so Dawnbreaker will give you an additional 300 and change. It's like almost 400, which would push your effective weapon damage to just around um, 7,500. But that's the cap, right? Whereas the cap on Thrives and Chaos is an additional 36% to your entire build. So if you were to, for example, uh, like I said before, we're running 7,000 effective weapon damage in a BG if you're fighting four people, right? Because you're, you're fighting team versus team versus team. So if you are fighting another team and you were to hit four people, four opponents on the opposing team, that would increase your overall damage by an additional 24%, right? So... Your 7,000 effective weapon damage now gets multiplied by 0.24, so that gives you an additional 1,680 effective weapon damage, which is much more than you'll get that from um, running DB, as well as it scale, as well as it heals you. As it says right there, it says um, it heals you for 56% of the damage. So this gives you another source of healing to sit when you're outnumbered. So if you're a Templar who likes to 1vx, this will help you to 1vx because you'll be able to not have to waste resources healing and it allows you to let that rally just sit there and take for when you get really low and you're able to utilize that rally more effectively, which then you increases your recovery because you're not burning resources to heal when you don't need to. Dawnbreaker cannot do that. The other reason is because Thrives in Chaos also is affected by both the Ruffian as well as the Slaughter passive so that when an opponent gets under 25%, Thrives in Chaos will tick for an additional 20% damage. And if you CC or root that person, they will take an additional 15% from a Thrives in Chaos. And again, like I said before, is you heal based off the amount of damage and, is, and the heal is per person. So if you hit, hit multiple people, each tick of Thrives and Chaos will heal you. So it really gives you a lot of sustain when you're fighting multiple opponents, especially on a build that isn't using Vigor and you're primarily waiting for a rally heal. Most of your healing is going to come from health recovery, as well as the healing that you're going to be getting from Extended Ritual, as well as the healing you're going to be getting from Consuming Trap, as well as the healing that you can get when you go to your back bar. Um, and utilize the um, health restore on the back bar, which is why I went powered. The reason being is because as you can see right here, I think I, I forgot to mention that we are using two piece agility. You could use two pieces of the Black Rose Prison um, to gain access to major protection. Um, of course, that means that you will be utilizing, uh, having to practice ability you know, basically every three seconds because it only lasts for three seconds and you'll lose out on the extra stamina entirely up to you if you have access to those weapons and you feel you need the extra mitigation 
go right ahead. I think I would be just fine without it, and I prefer the extra damage over the mitigation as I think I have enough sustain because of the health recovery. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention, um, shoot, I just forgot. In any event, um, feel free to check me out on Twitch. I do stream fairly regularly. Uh, be sure if you have any questions, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate um, everybody that does um, subscribe to the channel, helps the channel grow. And of course, like I said before, if you're looking for battleground builds for all classes, be sure to check out battleofthebuild.com. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.